So here's a uh, golf cart. It's called a uh, Malex 1998-625E. I got this for $300. It did not have this uh, top on it. I forget what that's called, but essentially this is a hodgepodge of different pieces and materials. And it's not one of my normal conversions, but it is a lot of fun. It came with a shunt-based motor in it that I had to remove uh, because I don't have a controller that would work with a shunt-based control or a motor. So I ended up buying an EasyGo uh, what is it, six horsepower uh, motor that would be compatible with a series controller like my Alltrax. I uh, just happen to have one sitting around because I don't actually use it on my lawnmower conversion anymore. So really the only pieces I've had to buy were the frame for 300, this uh, top piece, which I'll explain in a minute because it, it is a jerry-rigged, and um, the motor. So I'm all in maybe eight, nine hundred dollars at this point. I had the batteries. I actually had the key switch. I needed the reversing contactor. But, oh, and a few uh, zero and two gauge wires for safety. But other than that, I guess it's a lie. I did need a new charger. So the charger was like $40. So all in maybe $840, $940, something like that. Not bad. It's really good. Guys that gave it to me, you know, I'm sure they got a deal out of it because it's an older frame. You can't find parts for it anymore. So get it off their hands. I painted it blue. It was kind of uh, moldy and broken down when I first got it, but now, as you can see, you know, it's okay for a DIY, but I'd really like to sand it down and do it again because there's some runs that didn't come out well. Do it with some good paint. Uh, a few other things I had to do. This floorboard is new steel. It's really dark. Sorry, we're outside at nighttime. Uh, so this is rubber, but down below it is steel. Uh, it was rusted through, so I cut out the section of rusted metal and didn't weld it in, but tapped it to rounded edges and made it conform and be the shape that it's supposed to be, and screwed it down with, uh, what are they called, metal or sheet metal screws, something that's self-tapping, so they're easy, easily removed. It didn't have a seat when I got it, so this is my take on a... <laughs> They had the seat, <laughs> but uh, the people that got it from also were nice enough to give me these side rails or armrests, I think. But they're again not for a Malex golf cart; they're for an Easy Go. So a lot of this stuff had to be custom made to make it work. So I'll go over that real fast. When I got it, uh, it had no brakes. So that was the very first thing I was tempted to do. I wasn't going to put any money into it if I couldn't get the brakes to work. So I took it apart lifted it up in the air, and lo and behold, both Drake, break, Drake, both brake drums were missing. So what I did is I went on the internet and of course found out that they went $300 for a new set of brake drums and the whole kit. So I went on Amazon and found some Chinese offshot that is uh, EasyGo compatible. Turns out that EasyGo TXT, I think it is, and one of the older club cars is compatible. Marathon, maybe, something Marathon, Easy Go Marathon, is compatible. But no one says that. So I took a shot at it for, what was it, uh, 50 $60, put on new drum brakes. They work great. The next part was the brake lines, the actual link cables to the, uh, to the front. They were so rusted in their sheaths that when I put on one, it actually broke in half, and the other one was rusted in place. I had to uh, angle grind it out of there. So, anyway, what I ended up doing was uh, trying to part match, but ended up with club car uh, brake cables. They're four inches longer, but I was able to modify the linkages to function with it. But anyway, I'll stop going over that now. Going to go over the fun parts. So let me put this down, and I'll lift this up real fast. All right, so inside, again, I'll do this in the light time one time, but we have one of the Chevy Volt battery modules, and another Chevy Volt battery module over here, and I have them wired in parallel together to give me 
my 400 amps constant peak, which gives me a bit of safety. I, I don't know what the amp draw is on these things, but I assume it can be high, especially with that newer, uh, higher horsepower motor. So you can't really see it, and I don't think my phone will let me turn on the camera or on the light. Let me see. Oh, there you go. See back there, there's a new motor. So that's an ES1-4002. It is a 36 volt motor, but it is compatible with 48 volts. I made sure of that before I played with that. And oh, there's the batteries, you can see the links. I have everything zip tied to the front, so it, it's not gonna move. And they are tied together. All of the individual cells are also parallel with each other on the opposite cell. And on top, that is a piece I am waiting to get. So I have a BMS unit just sitting there. It is not safe for it to be sitting there like that. If it touches metal, you know, that's bad. It's an exposed circuit board. So I'm just waiting on a, a new one, and it's going to go inside of this nice box here to keep everything that can be metal grounded or such safe and in line with my fuse, which is right here. So I have the fuse right off the main input right into the box. So that's my positive lead. If that pops, everything just turns off. So I'm not going to open the box because I've actually done that in other videos. They're very similar. I mean, there's an Alltrax controller in there. There's a reversing contactor. There's a uh, bu two buses here for 48 volt leads to my uh, switch up here. I did convert it to a reversing switch instead of this um, older style lever system which was actually missing from the system, so it wasn't about to try to figure that out. I uh, had to replace these seat locks with, or what are they called, seat latches, with something like EasyGo again, because the ones that were on here, again, I could not find. They were kind of like a pole sliding system, and I could not find those anywhere. Anyway, it's actually <laughs> really fast. I'm going to put you down again, I'm going to put the seat on, and we'll go, and I'll show you how fast it is. Now, I know this is not my normal, but here, I'm going to turn off that light, because I think it's making it blurry. So, I'll show you down here. Switch on. I have a voltage read down here. You'll see I've been playing with this thing, so it's not at 50.2, but it's at 94, 95% charge. Uh, I got my forward reverse. You'll hear the contactor when I turn it off. Here, here I'll do it back here so you can hear it. So that's how it switches. Uh, turning it off at the key turns off power to everything, so just like a normal golf cart. Here we go. Now, I'm gonna go back into the light because it's kind of dark back here. So, let me go up here, and we'll go a little faster. <laughs> it's actually quite fast, and I don't know if this video is going to do it justice. It's not as fast as my go-kart, but it is fast. I would kind of, I'd put it around 30 to 35 miles per hour at its current uh, design and the way I have it implemented with the 48 volts on a 36 volt motor, but You know all those ratings are based on 36 volts So it was rated for 25 miles per hour with a 36 so at 48 volts I was thinking add a quarter power or you know do the math add 25% to the overall total and we're in the 30s so probably about 30 to 32 really, but I Wouldn't say it's a speed hawk, but it's, it's really fast. Honestly, it's got a lot of low-end torque the whole back end will spin out on me if I go fast enough. So, yeah, I'll have to do this in the daytime too because my backyard isn't quite bright enough. But let me know what you think. Honestly, I really enjoy this thing. I'm excited to go camping with it one of these times. And I got the locking mechanism working for the brakes. So putting in lock, actually, I can't move it now. Uh, only once I push the throttle. We'll disengage my brake. See that? And now it'll move. However, if I do this, see? It doesn't move. So now it'll move. You hear the click? 
that tells me the Alltrax controller was aware the brake was on, and once the brake came off, it was able to turn on and run like it should. Anyway, if there's anything I should do to this thing... Oh, I did want to explain. So I told you the top didn't come with it. It came from a man in, in uh, Virginia Beach from around this area. He had one laying around for 50 bucks. I determined it's from a Yamaha G, G series, G14, the G19, and managed to weld together a uh, retaining bracket. So it bolts into my retaining bracket. So this whole armature is replaceable. And in the event that I ever actually find a real Malax top, maybe I'll work on that. But I wanted to keep this as stock as I could. This is where the original bracketry for the rear seat, if you buy one, goes. So, not that I could find one anyway, so it might end up being some club car or, or uh, easy go rear seat by that point. But you know what? This just shows that what you could do with a little bit of knowledge that I got on YouTube. It's actually a really great deal. You can't find a golf cart for less than $1,000 that's fully functional and 48 volts and running on lithium batteries at that. So, it's a cool project and I'll probably use it to haul stuff around my yard and for various vacations that we take as we go on. Anyway, talk to you guys later.